My name is Mary Gail King. Tell me the name of this piece. This piece is Nayurka and Nayurka and Reina. Tell me about it. Well, the two women in the in the painting are they're actually named after women named Nyurka and Reina. And they're part of a group that I that I do a lot of work with. I work on mythos and uh, legend and gods and goddesses, that kind of thing. And recently I went on a retreat with Nyrka, who's this this woman. She's the leader of a group that hard to hard to describe without going into everything. But this particular event is one where we explored the archetypes of different gods and goddesses, especially related to the solar system. So during one of our ceremonial events, we all dressed up in garb that was reminiscent of the god Mars, which is the god of war. Do you dress like that today? No, this is actually channeling moon energy. This is your shopping attire. Yeah, exactly. No, this is, um, we did work based on, uh, some of it was representational, of, um, symbolic of color. And the color black, for example, that I'm wearing relates to uh, the moon. The colors that Nirka was wearing red, and Rena is actually wearing an, a Native American headdress and, you know, very ceremonial warrior type garb. And when I'm doing work with these people, for instance, when we were dressed like this, we were, there were a hundred of us dressed in red. We went down to the beach in uh, Santa Ara. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm no problem. Yeah. yeah. We went down to the beach in San Diego yeah. to shoot bow and arrow, really? which was really cool. And essentially, a lot of what we do with Nirka is, is based on, neuro-linguistic programming, which is a way of changing or manifesting things in the world by changing your thoughts and your words and your actions. So it ties into cognitive science and traditional of, tradition of neuro-linguistic programming. All kinds of information there. Basically, we were shooting balls that had our goals on them. So we're shooting, you know, shooting balls with our bow and arrow as teams moving, moving our balls towards our goals. So just kind of team building, um, playing with, with fantasy and ideas and ways of tapping into the divine nature of human beings and our connection to each other and the divine and the world. So when I was doing this, it's, it's kind of amazing because when you work with women like that for a period of three days, and you're doing intense work, and a lot of it is focused on outer beauty and in all of its manifestations, whether it's conventionally beautiful or not conventionally beautiful, like you can be any size, shape, color, have anything you know going on, but you're still beautiful. And when you see that, and I, I was very inspired by the different women I was around because of their very strong beauty. And it was interesting because when you look at a person and start to objectify them a little bit, you see some of what they're projecting into the world that is archetypical and um, nice. much, yeah, I'm like, I'm rambling, so. <laughs> Can I ask you what you project, or what you would like to project? Well, uh, all of us, All of us actually embody all of the different archetypes at one point in time or another. And one of the things that we did in our work is tap into our individual, you know, like I may, I may channel moon energy, which is more feminine, more introverted, um, or the energy of Venus, which is very, um, you know, Venetian, <laughs> very seductive and sensual. Mars is very direct and focused. I feel like I do that a lot. Um, 
And what happens is when you're aware of those kinds of energies within yourself, you can very intentionally evoke different characteristics. If that makes any sense. It's just a way of viewing the world in a in an ancient way and bringing it into the modern world in a very mindful way and very mindfully not just putting something in the outer world but developing positive things within you and being aware of things that may not be as positive and understanding how to alchemize and shift those things. So, you know, we carry everything. <laughs> Can I ask you, what were some of the design or composition considerations in this piece? Well, in the original, I used a photo reference. I also, when I do people and when I paint things, what I'm looking for is essence. And I look for capturing the feel or the true nature of a thing or a person. So when I saw this, I, I saw in the photograph that I referenced, you know, these two women were in the same picture plane, so they were equally important in the photograph. I did not want that in, in the composition of the painting because it wouldn't be as strong. As a painter, I wanted to shift that focus a little bit, and I wanted to shift it to, to Nirka because she's the leader of this, uh, of our group and of this particular um, ceremony also. And I also, so I focused on making her a little more representational. I made sure that I captured, you know, she has this very angry kind of direct gaze that has, you know, she's got the furrowed brow and very focused eyes with small pupils, that kind of thing. That is not something that everyone would say is necessarily beautiful. However, it's very powerful. Reina was, you know, she puts out an energy that you can feel anywhere you can see her, you can feel her. And I wanted her to be a little bit more um, symbolic. And to me, she in this painting represents a little more male energy than female energy. And all of us contain male and female. So I just kind of played with that. So there was a little bit of this dialogue between the male and the female. Um, both of them are very powerful. And I really wanted to make sure that that was conveyed. It's a small piece. And the reason for that is because I was, you know, I'm working in an intimate way with some of these original pieces. I plan on creating them and turning them into a tarot deck of goddess cards. And that's in the process. I have a series of these right now. And I also expect to do some of them larger because monumental, these will be very, very powerful pieces. So that will take some time. I expect to do this over the course of the next year. And I'm looking forward to seeing it evolve and to looking into the different faces of women and no doubt men who, you know, and seeing what I see there and pulling that out. Um, is there anything that didn't work as well as you had hoped in this piece or is there anything that you're weak on overall in your artwork? Nothing, that's fine. <laughs> There are always challenges when dealing with composition. Well, with this one, the biggest challenge, and I feel like I pretty successfully handled it, the biggest challenge, again, with two faces, even in a picture plane, when you're referencing a photo or looking at something, is creating a sense of dominance and focus. And I wanted this, and conveying meaning through how the composition is chosen. So I very intentionally chose a portrait, you know, a long narrow shape because it's a people. I very intentionally, instead of dividing it directly down the middle, you know, it needed to be over, over this way. Um, this area, I considered cropping that arrow, but it's fine. And in a future piece, I may or may not keep that, or I may change it. This kind of space down here isn't necessarily necessary. It's successful either way. 
Um, the, the feathers are something that could use a little more differentiation, you know, a little, a little more contrast in there, but if I did too much, it might take away from the focus of the painting. So I'm very much uh, designing it with a sense of what's my, who do I want to make important in this piece? How do I create that dominance? How do I create meaning out of the relationship between the two figures? And how do I convey some of that meaning to a viewer? So there's a lot in here. There's some symbolism, you know, archetypical symbolism in here. Well, some of the symbols are um, things like the, the third eye being represented here by, uh, by the little dot. It has an eagle on it, actually. In, you can't really see it because I don't have the gory detail in there. But that and the red, you know, the red projecting the power and the symbol of war. You know, there are all kinds of things in there. And they, I don't want them to be overtly, I don't want to tell people everything. I want people to guess and imagine. You don't have to know who these people are. They don't have to be real. They can be pretend. You can like them or not, you know. And, you know, so that's what's there. I don't know if that helps. The only thing I would in critique do here is potentially crop it there. I, you know, and if it didn't work, I would do another one. I mean, you just do another one. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Your name again is? Mary Gail King. And do you want to give any contact info, like a website or email? Yeah, address? my website is fairly easy if you know how to spell my name. It's www.mary. G A I L K I N G. So, dot com. So, you should be able to find me. There's a contact information form. Follow me on Facebook under the same name. Pretty easy. Thank you. That was Oh, good. Good. Thank you. I'm like.